So now let's think about vector fields as taking a function. Let me draw this function again here, f. And for simplicity, let's just assume that our functions take values in r. I may change that at some point. Um, and I have a vector field here. So vector field I visualize as attaching to every single point on my domain A where the function is defined. Let's say A is open for now. And then a vector field is just a function from A to Rn. And the vectors, the lengths can be arbitrary. Um, just because I'm drawing these vectors as if they were inside of A, that's, that's completely meaningless. Remember last time we mentioned that um, at every point x, I sort of have this infinite plane, this like infinite plane of Rn attached to every single point. So, so let V be a vector field on A. And I make no assumptions about whether it's differentiable or anything like that. But if I did, I would call it a differentiable vector field, for instance. Or if it was continuous, I would say that's a continuous vector field. The definition is exactly the same as if I view v as an ordinary function. Now, again, f is differentiable, is assumed to be differentiable throughout. So what I can do is, as we mentioned before, I can consider the expression dxf, this differential of f at x in A, apply to the vector v at x. This expression makes sense because f is differentiable and vx is an element of Rn. So what I, can, what I get from this um, let's write it like this. This expression, this defines a function from A to R, well, I can keep M. It's actually maybe easier if I keep M so that it doesn't confuse you that it's just a number. So I get a function from A to Rm by taking x and sending it to this expression, dxf vx. I want to give a name for this function. It takes in a lot of information from f, and it takes in information from v. So let this function be denoted by curly v, don't really know how to draw that, um, applied to f. So we view v, curly v, this is, this is going to be awful, huh? Uh, we view curly v as, um, as an operation whose input is a function, is a differentiable function, And output is a function. And the domains of these functions are the same. So the domain of the vector field is the same as the domain of f. And if not, then we would take the intersection so that all of these expressions make sense. So we think of, so we have differentiable functions. Here's this you know, set of all differentiable functions. That's a rather huge set. Um, and when we apply any vector field, so here we have vector fields. We imagine taking a differentiable function, and this vector field is like a box. We apply this function into this box, and this produces for us a new function. On the same domain. And that's what a vector field does. Not only can we visualize a vector field in terms of these arrows at every single point, we can also think of vector fields as acting on functions, differentiable functions, and spitting out functions. 
the functions that it spits out need not be differentiable. Think about it. If v is not differentiable, then it's very unlikely for the function here to be differentiable as well. We can do this explicitly by computing some examples of functions and vector fields. Um, and, and I have such examples in the notes, so I recommend you look at those. For now, let me list some properties of these vector fields when we view them as operations taking in functions and spitting out new functions. So first property is, again, the curly notation will be used for vector fields associated, for vector fields viewed as operators associated to functions. So one of the properties is that if I have a vector field V, I guess this is a much easier way to write this, um, VF plus G, so if I have two differentiable functions and I have a vector field, then I can apply that vector field to the sum of those two functions. And this is exactly just applying the vector field to each of these two functions separately and adding them up. If I multiply any function by a constant c, then that's the same thing as applying the vector field to that function and then multiplying by that constant c. So these are sort of the linear properties of applying vector fields to functions. Something incredibly special happens when I have functions from Rn to R1. So if m equals 1 and I apply f to the product of f times g, then maybe you can guess what you get. What happens when you take the derivative of the product of two functions? There's the product rule. So that's exactly what happens here. You have the derivative of the first. That's a function from Rn to R times the second. That's not a dot product. That's just multiplied. Plus the first times the derivative of the second. This is the Leibniz property associated to vector fields on Rn and how they act on functions. Another very important theorem about when a vector field is differentiable is the following. This is sort of like a decomposition theorem for any vector field. So a vector field is determined by is uniquely determined by its component functions. So a vector field, let's call it V, is determined by the following. So V equals the sum of, I can take the vector V at any single point and I can evaluate it I can take its inner product with the standard unit vectors. So what do I exactly mean by this expression? You might wonder. I don't know what you mean. The input here is not a vector. The input here is an entire function. So what do I mean by taking the inner product of these two vector fields? So here, capital EI represents the standard unit vector field in the ith direction at every single point, something like this. And v could be completely, you know, it can be completely arbitrary, need not even be differentiable, anything like that. So maybe v looks something like this, maybe it goes like that, I don't know, at all of these points. So what do I mean by evaluating this inner product? This thing here is defined by sending a point x in your domain A to the vector EI comma VX. So the vector field is determined by, sort of obviously just if you draw this picture, taking the vector V and taking its inner product on each of these pieces and then adding up all of those. Indeed, any vector in Rn can be expressed in terms of the unit basis by its projections Onto, those, onto that standard basis. So that's exactly what we're saying here. 
but again, this is a function of x, and we're doing this at every single vector space, at every single Rn, for all of these points. So we can do that here as well. So vector field is determined by and determines these functions. Oh, and let me write, since this is just a number uh, after we evaluate this, I have to, again, multiply by the vector field EI so that the end result is a vector field. And when you have this expression, then it makes sense to ask, and a lot of these things are true, that a vector field V is differentiable if and only if each of these component functions are differentiable. And that's true. Um, and this allows us to make sense of differentiable vector fields. And when you know that functions are acted on by vector fields, you can imagine that they can be acted on vector fields multiple, multiple times. So you can imagine that, okay, I start with a differentiable function. Take a vector field, act on it. Imagine I didn't just get any function, I got a differentiable function again. Then I can take another vector field, act on that, and I could get a new function. And then a very important question arises. And this question is in incredibly important, especially when we just consider the unit vectors. So imagine you started out with a differentiable function f. And you could apply some vector field v to it. So I get vf. Imagine that this too is differentiable and I can apply to it some new vector field, let's say W. And then I have W, V, F. Again, this is a function. So now imagine that W can act on F2, since F is differentiable. And consider the case where W, F is also differentiable, so it makes sense to act on it by V. So here I have V, W, F. I have two different functions, right? First I act on V, then W, or first I act by W and then V. Are these two functions the same? I'll let you think about that. And in the next video, we'll answer that question.